Welcome back. Continuing from where we left off, we are still on the Oracle architecture and we want to continue from there and we proceed. So after understanding the different components that make up the memory structures of Oracle, it's time for us to look at the Bakagwan processes. Remember the instance is made up of the inst remember the instance is made up of Bakagwan processes and memory. We are done with memory. So let us look at the Bakagwan processes. We have two types of Bakagwan processes. We have the mandatory and then the optional. We're going to pay much attention to the mandatory. There are not so many. We are going to look at the system monitor. The first Bakagwan process is the system monitor, which is called the SMON or the CMON, whatever you call it. The system monitor its work is to mount, open, and close the database. That is its work, no, nothing more. It is the mother of everything. Without it, we can't start anything. So the system monitor is in charge of mounting. We are going to be looking at these processes when we are looking at the instance management. Mounting, it means the database was down, so we are opening it. So the mounting process of associating, we shall be looking at the details. Opening and closing is charged with the system monitor. Without the system monitor, we cannot open the database, we cannot shut it down. That is the system monitor. It has to be all the time, it has to be okay. Then we have the process monitor. It is the PMON, just like you hear its name. It is charged with monitoring all the background processes. All the background processes, if there is any interruption in any of the processes, it's the process monitor to report that and to work on that, to alert the responsible process to fix that. That is the process monitor. In case of any abrupt shutdown from the user connection, it is the process monitor to do the cleanup process. Remember we say that whenever a user is connecting, you need to have a gadget connected to your instance, connected to the instance. So once we have a problem with that, it, once we have a connection from the user to the instance, it is the process monitor to deallocate the server process that was allocated to to deallocate them to stop the server process that had been started on that connection to deallocate memory the PGA memory that was given to the user process etc that is the process monitor it is the head boy the, the the head prefect of the of the school you know that is the process monitor then you have the database writer this is where it becomes more interesting. The database writer writes the recently modified data blocks from the database buffer to the redo, from the database buffer to the data file. Now we have a files. Remember in the previous discussion, we talked about the database buffer where we store the recently modified data blocks. Now in the database buffer, everything is stored temporarily is stored temporarily so we need to get it from there and we take it to the permanent storage so the database writer writes everything it gets everything in the database buffer and it takes the chain data blocks from the database buffer to the data file data file is one of the database files that is used to store information we shall be looking at that just in a few minutes so it is this process that gets the information from the database buffer to the data file where it is stored permanently. And whenever that happens, we call that transfer the checkpoint event. So the database writer is charged with a checkpoint event. When we talk about the checkpoint event, we mean moving data from the database buffer where it is stored temporarily to the data files where data is stored permanently. Then we have another process we call the checkpoint. The checkpoint is different from the checkpoint event. The checkpoint is a process, then the checkpoint process, then the checkpoint event is just the transfer of data from the database buffer to the data file. So when we look at the checkpoint process, this work is to update the control file and the data file headers about a checkpoint event. Confusing, right? <laughs> Don't worry. What happens is Whenever we have a transfer of data from the database buffer to the data file, Oracle alerts the data file headers and then the control file. These two files are both in the database. Whenever you see file, we mean we're talking about the database. We are going to see that later. So 
whenever there is a movement of data from the database buffer to the data files, the control file is updated. You shall be looking at the reasons why it should be updated. Whenever the control files are not updated about this checkpoint, we get into a failure we call the instance failure. We shall be looking at that later in the database recovery. So whenever we are moving data from the database buffer to the data file, the control file is updated about that change. Though the checkpoint doesn't bring the information, no. The checkpoint process doesn't bring the information, but it just alerts the control file that there was an update that was made to the data file. There was a movement of data that happened from the database buffer to the data file. That update is in form of what we call the SCN or the system change number. So these two must be hand in hand. We shall be looking at that later. But for now, whenever there is an update, whenever there is a transfer, the checkpoint process updates the control file and then the data file headers about the checkpoint event or about the movement of data from the database buffer to the data file. Then the last process is called the log writer. It is, it is charged with movement of the SQL statement that caused a change from the redo log buffer to the redo log file. It's, remember I say that the redo log buffer in the SGA components is charged with storing SQL statement that caused a change to data. But this is done temporarily. Those are the five mandatory processes that must be available in the instance that should be turned on for us to be able to use our database for us to access anything from the database. The system monitor, the process monitor, the database writer, the checkpoint, and the log writer. We have so many other processes, the optional, but we shall not be looking at them. Let us see this in an illustration to understand it further. We are having our server where we install Oracle and we are having the instance at the same time we are having the database. These two are different. Now the instance is made up of different components, the memory structures and the background processes. We say we are going to focus much on the SGA component, the database buffer that stores recently modified data blocks temporarily. We are having the redo log buffer or the redo buffer charged with storing SQL statement that caused a change to data. Then we are having the shared pool that is charged with storing the execution plan for SQL statements. Then down here in the database, we are having the data file. This is one of the files we have in the database. So crucial. Its work is to store data permanently. You post anything on Facebook or on Twitter or on TikTok. All that information is stored in the database where we, on a file we call the data file. That is where the information is stored. Then we are having another file called the control file. We're going to be looking at all these files in details in the next episode. So we are having also the control files. The control file, we're having the control file, it is charged with storing any important information about the database. We shall be looking at that in detail. Then we are having another file we call the redo log file. It is charged with storing SQL statement that cause a change to the data permanently. You can see they are stored in the data. They are all stored in the database. Then we are having so many other files, like the parameter file, the alert file, the password files, etc. Now, where is the backup one process? Whenever we have a change here in the database buffer, the database buffer remember stores changes that are made to the data, but the data must be stored later in the data file. So whenever we have some changes in the data, we need to get these changes and we store them in the data file. Whenever I have some changes in the redo log buffer, we need to get these changes, the SQL statements, and we store them in the redo log file. Whenever there is a movement of data from the database buffer to the data file, the checkpoint must update the control file and the data file headers. So where are these processes? This is the movement of data from the database buffer to the data file. And this arrow indicates a process we call the database writer. It writes information from the database buffer to the data file. 
whenever that change happens whenever we have this movement it's what we call the checkpoint event whenever there is a movement of data from the database buffer to the data file we call that the checkpoint event whenever there is a checkpoint event in other words whenever there is a movement of data from the database buffer to the data file the file is updated the control file must be updated about that change that happened and then the data file header must also be updated so you can see this process is taking two on the data file and then on the control file which process is that you guessed it it is the checkpoint so the checkpoint updates the control file about the movement of data and then the data file and and then it also updates the data file headers then finally we have then you see another movement of data from the redo log buffer to the redo log file and like you guessed it it is the log writer whenever we have this movement of data from the redo log buffer to the redo log file we are having the log writer apart from that apart from these three processes we also have the system monitor which is in charge of ensuring that everything is open the database is open the instance is open it starts opens and mounts the database then you have another one called the process monitor that is charged with ensuring that all the processes are running well in the database so that is how these processes work hand in hand and those are the five mandatory processes that should be available for oracle to run for us to be able to get everything from the database let us look at these processes and we have a look at them we use a view of for now you can call it the table but we shall be looking at what it means it's called the v dollar process it is where we can look at the running processes that are really happening to our database right now so when you run you have 33 of them even if they are 33 the file mandatory must be there for oracle to run you can see that we are having pimon that is one the process monitor we're having another one we call the checkpoint you can see it here this is two then the log writer this is three then the system monitor this is four then lastly and then the database writer which is the five so these five processes must be there for oracle to run we cannot continue working unless we have these processes running and they are really up. apart from the instance let us wind up with let us wind up the oracle architecture we also have what we call the database so in the previous discussion we are looking at the instance and we are done with the instance we have seen the back of one processes and we have seen the memory then let us look at the database remember the second part of the oracle software it is the database so the database is just composed of the database files we are not going to look into the details because we have because we have another dedicated section and purposely for storage structures or for the database so the database is just made up of the files and we have looked at some of them we have the physical and the logical files we shall be looking at what that means so with the physical files we are having the data files storing data that stores data like you have seen have the redo log file that stores the SQL statement that causes a change we have the control file this stores all the important information about the database we have the parameter file they store the system parameters we shall be looking at all these in the next episode and then in the upcoming episodes then you also have the logical storage structures like the table space segments extends blocks with the logical storage structures we are having the table space the table space is charged with storing the data files the table space towards data files we have really a lot to discuss in this topic of the storage structures and we are not going to waste a lot of time but winding up i'm going to use an illustration from my website called my reference i borrowed this from the oracle documentation we are having the server process that works with the pga they work hand in hand to ensure that the server requests are made the client requests are satisfied then we are having the instance with uh, sga and then the pga you remember that so we are having the sga which is the memory storage structures and then the backup one processes now we are having this side we are having you can see that this upper part is the instance then this is the database like you've been seeing that 
So we are having the physical files and then the logical files. I'd say we, we, there is no need to worry about that. In the instance, we are having the SGA and the background processes. Now in the database, we are having the physical files, the data file, control file, redo file. There are really so many archive, redo, the archive log files, password files. Then down here, we are having the logical storage structure, the table spaces, you can see them. Then it, we said in the previous discussion that each data file is stored in a table space. Each data file is stored in a table space. So what happens? What happens is we are having components of the SGA and we are moving component from and we are and we are moving some content from the SGA to these components you can see by the database writer, the checkpoint, the log writer. Remember that. So you just know they didn't give us the SGA components, but we know it that from the previous discussion, the database writer is getting information from the database buffer, which is part of the SGA, to the data files. We know that the checkpoint is updating the control file and the data file headers about this movement of the database writer from the database buffer to the data file. We know that the log writer gets information or the content from the redo log buffer, which is part of the SGA, to the redo log file. So in brief, this is the architecture. This is the diagram we've been spending much of our time to really understand and get some, some details from it. So this is, so with this, I want to proudly say that we are done with the Oracle architecture. And in the next episode, we are going to learn how to install Oracle software on our machines. It has really been a lengthy section and let's meet in the next.